So what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do a Weight Watchers episode. So you see behind me the truck and I have one of my best friends here, Kwame. He works at Criswell here in Thurmont, Maryland. So if you are in the market for a Chevy or Chrysler Dodge Ram, be sure. That's right. Hit this guy up guys. He's actually helped me out today with this uh, video too. So be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Let's get into it. We're in a 2021 Chevy Silverado. If you're in the market for a Chevy truck right now, you're gonna pay all the money for them. The used ones are like $62,000, $63,000 for like a 2500 LTZ. So you're gonna pay big money for these trucks. I mean, this truck is like $80,000. I did a review on this truck, comparing it to a 2500. Uh, you should go back and watch that video. I'll show you guys around this in this video, but I won't spend too much time on that. But today, I'm gonna show it to you guys in front of a big Grand Design toy hauler. I don't know the number. I, I looked it up online really quickly to make sure it was in stock, but I didn't get any information on it. But like I said, we're heading over there now, and I did do a driving impression with this truck last, so maybe I'll do it in this video. And I've said this before, this truck does have over the leaf springs over the Chevy Silverado 2500. So it does feel a little stiff, but on this smooth road, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between the trucks. All right, I'm gonna show you guys a quick acceleration right now. Here we go. All right, we're gonna go from about 30. Here we go. truck is really fast quick on his feet it almost doesn't feel like it's so heavy but at right about 80 miles an hour there's some wind noise I wonder if I push out the mirrors would it change a little bit I didn't do anything but yeah there's definitely some wind noise up in here some in some places really like the overall design. This is the high country to you. See it on the headrests. I like this rear view camera. Man, sure, they do it up inside their interiors. Now, I never noticed this, but look, there's a shimmy in the steering wheel. But the seats aren't shaking though. There's definitely a nice pronounced shimmy in the steering wheel. I don't know if you guys can see it. Yes, wow. It's not bad, but it's definitely there. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here. And you guys can see in that mirror, that big boy momentum is right behind us. Now, GM does allow you to drop that tailgate and it gives you a chime. Now, check this out. Watch GM flex on us real quickly, on us Ford and Ram guys. Look at this, they are flexing on you right now you could push that tailgate back up inside the truck tell me that's not cool all right so as far as the cameras go they have the best cameras in the business so they're flexing on the skin come on GM stop flexing look at that so very clear and I would say this is probably number one um, I'm gonna get a little bit more positioned in the center Let's go this way. Oh, that's nice. Look at that. Now they do give you a line too. and get you a little closer. They give you a line to help you get centered. And you can zoom in. Now, on 2020s, you did not have the option to zoom in. All right, let's check it out. And you do have an electronic parking brake. Let's see if it, does it do it by itself? Nope. There it is. Let's go check out what we have here. Oh, I got a long ways to go. But because this is not my truck, I'm gonna be extra careful, so. Wow, look at this truck, this looks so good. Man. Okay, I was wrong, it did put on the parking brake automatically. But yeah, check this out guys. 
This is about where it would be at if you had a fifth wheel hitch. So, yeah, if you are buying a fifth wheel, a long bed is the way to go, especially for something this big, because you're going to probably have to make a 90 degree turn to get that butt to really turn for you. Now, something that GM did that's unique is they did move the puck system behind the axles and that is going to help you make a 90 degree turn i was able to make a 90 degree turn in a video a while ago i think it's almost two years old and i was really appalled by that so six foot nine bed uh, compared to uh ram six four and i think ford has a six seven i believe it is but yeah look at the amount of space you have you can easily make a 90 degree turn with this truck Whew, that looks so good. That's gonna be my thumbnail guys. What you think? Is this like the dream setup? Now keep in mind This is a triple axle trailer so a single rear wheel might be a little tough. Let's take a look out back So if you drop the tailgate, I did notice that I'm pretty much positioned where you would be at on a fifth wheel or if you convert this to like a gooseneck maybe and you have a good amount of space um, to get around this tailgate. I know Ram and now GM trucks is pretty easy. Ford has a little bit longer tailgate, so you don't have as much space um, between your compartment area and this if you're towing a fifth wheel. Now, every fifth wheel is going to be a little different, especially depending on how you do your fifth wheel hitch and your pin box. But GM does come from the factory with a uh, puck system, and they do have a four pin and a seven pin. And if you were to need to put this tailgate up. There is a button on the other side. And you have a camera right here. And then you have a light for your conventional hitch. They do give you your camera inputs for your trailer too. So if you would like to add those, sometimes they'll have even some blind spot cameras here that you can connect to the truck. And of course you have a backup camera that normally comes standard on most trailers. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a look at the mirrors and I'll show you guys a few more camera views, okay? Alright, so let's go back to this camera view inside the bed. And you still have to kind of look back too. I feel like this is a lot more clear and because this is a long bed, I feel like it's a little bit better to look out the window versus depending too much on these cameras. As you guys see, I'm pretty much back over the uh, hitch or where it would be positioned at. But I like the fact that you can actually zoom in. They give you a line, you can turn it off. I found that the line is sometimes slightly off. So I don't really use it for mine. I kind of eyeball it. As far as the mirrors go, you have really good visibility around the trailer. really good stuff there and as far as your towing features you do have tow haul mode they give you a toggle off to the side and then you have different driving modes that you can do and these exhaust brake it's right here on the side there's only one setting for that if you go through the screen they do give you some trailering way to set up your trailer you can do multiple trailers also so if you have two of their trailers you're in luck because you can set it up a little bit differently and they do have an area here for your cameras too as I mentioned and as I mentioned too you have guest trailers and you can just add it I don't know how many trailers you can add but you can add quite a few it's like you can add three from what I can see here and that's pretty much it guys like I said well, let's go ahead and oh actually one last thing so you do have a uh, trailer brake control too. Forgot to point that out. So you can set the gain or you can reduce it. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a look at the trailer and like I said, we'll look at the numbers and then we're going to put it in the spreadsheet to see whether this truck can tow a big toy hauler. Alright guys, so here is the number 395MS. It's a Momentum M-Class. And one thing I love about having a big toy hauler is Man, you get so much headroom. Like, look at how they set up your kitchen area, and then you have your living room area, and then you have your dining area, and then you have an additional couch 
off to the side here. I love this type of floor plan. Huge windows too. So even though it's not that bright outside, it's kind of like an overcast. And you still have really good light coming in here. Now, my wife would appreciate having this much counter space. And she would really appreciate this stove. I mean, this is basically residential size. And, oh wow. You can probably easily cook a turkey inside of here too. And look at the fit and finish of the cabinets. Everything looks really nice. I like the, this... I don't know, is that glass maybe? Looks really good. Residential size microwave. Really large uh, refrigerator too. And again, look at all the countertop space here too. Wow. They give you a plug on the side here. And they do give you a split. I prefer to have just no split, no divider for the sinks. Wow, this is really nice, guys. And check this out, too. Oh, wow. So you don't have any legs here. So when you sit down, only thing you have to look out for is just not hitting your knees here. But you can kind of, you know, you can really play footsies in here if you like. Decent size fireplace below. Large TV, though. You do have one sleeping area up there. And this is a, this is a large uh, garage. Half bath, really small though. But I guess the reason why it's so small is it gives you more room for your toys. Some people do use this area for like eating also. You do have your happy jack system. They give you a ladder and yeah, and you have a TV up top. I don't see that you have a third AC in here, but that could be an option. I really like these blinds too. They do give an entrance for here. And it looks like you can turn it into a patio out back too. I would almost venture to tell you, like if you're gonna buy something this big, you're not gonna be able to use this at many campgrounds. There's very few because for the most part, they can only accommodate like a 40 foot to 45 foot rig. So you'll have to really plan your trips accordingly if you would like to use that back patio. I have seen some toy haulers that have a patio on the side too. That might work a little bit more, but that back one's gonna be a little bit tough. Now walking up here, they do give you a uh, lipper component for to control the inside of here. So all the lights, things like that. And yeah, I like this rig guys. Wow. So they give you a sink and then your toilet off to the side, pocket door. And I don't know, what, what would you use this for? I, I, I like this, like they give you a, a window, like that's smart. Wow. This isn't big. I don't know if having a seat in here would really, let's see, this is, yeah, this is, um. this is tight. But, I mean, they give you, look at all the stuff they give you. And this is a little flimsy. But yeah, I mean, you have, wow, you can really get down in here. But yeah, guys, this is, this is beautiful. Really, really nice setup here. I mean, there's windows everywhere. And one thing I've said in a previous video is next RV I buy, I'm going to do a queen size bed. I feel like a king is just too big inside of a fifth wheel. Just my um personal opinion especially if you don't have a wide body or if you don't have a you know like a, a, a probably like a montana no, type rv this is going to be a slide that comes in this whole wardrobe here so if you are looking at something like this you may have to consider when you travel if you don't want to push up your slides i guess the only thing it's really going to block is your shower so that kind of stinks so keep that in mind but man, look at your nightstands. You have huge nightstands. You have USBs, you have plugs, storage. I mean, this is the works here, guys. I and mean, this thing is like $115,000 too. So yeah, keep that in mind when you're looking at this. I do like this door here too. 
really nice. Nothing is more pleasing to see a generator and a fifth wheel. This means you can camp anywhere. Love that. You do have a hydraulic system for your um, jacks too, so just keep that in mind. And check out the design of the front cap. They've always done a good job with these. And they give you the LED strips going down. Like they give you one propane on this side. Yep, 30 pounder. Something that you have to get used to though is your storage area is always small. Spray port, power. This is gonna be a rack and pinion slide too. And check out this wheel and tire. Whoa. These are gonna be your Cooper Work Series tires. I don't think I've ever seen these or heard of them before, so I'm gonna take a look for you guys. So these are gonna be a load range eight, 16 ply, and they're gonna be 215, 75, 17, and the capacity for these tires are 4,805 pounds. If you do this as a dual, 4,540 pounds. You do give you a Creed 3000 for the suspension, and it's just using like a standard leaf pack also here's your water heater it's back of your furnace and this is where you connect your 50 amp i actually like this spot too this is a convenient spot typically they're on the side here and sometimes they'll put one out back too and this is your wet bay so there's really no storage area on this side so i guess you have to store most of your stuff in the garage area so just keep that in mind guys they do give you a filter and then this is just your nautilus system and then this has your sh outside shower and this is just a diagram to show you how to work your water system now i'm gonna always say this because i feel like because i full-time my rv now it's a nuisance i prefer to have my water connections below my valves and the reason why is when you have this hooked up and you're staying for a week or two when you have to dump your gray tank down these hoses get in the way especially when you have your outside shower connected too because i use my outside shower so it does get in the way and having this in here does not make it any easier too so just keep that in mind i like that it give you your low um, drain points inside of here very convenient some rvs manufacturer will put them in the center where your axles are that is the dumbest thing in the world and yeah, I will almost not buy an RV because I live up north and you're gonna have to use that quite often, especially if you plan on leaving it in storage for some time too, you wanna drain that system. All right guys, so let's take a look at the number. So this has a gross fuel weight rating of 20,000 uh, pounds. Each axle is gonna be 7,000 pounds, so 21,000 pounds in axles. And your all-in cargo carrying capacity is gonna be 3,882 pounds which gives you an unloaded vehicle weight of 16,058 pounds, okay? Now, let's take a look at the truck. You have a gross vehicle weight of 12,250 pounds. Gross combined weight is 29,700. And rear gross axle weight rating out back 7,250 pounds. Curb weight is 8,507, which gives you a max payload of 3,743 pounds. And as far as your fifth wheel or gooseneck trailer goes, you can tow 21,100 pounds. All right, now that you've seen the numbers for the truck and for the trailer, let's go ahead and put them in a spreadsheet to see if this is a good fit. This is a quick look at the floor plan. It does have a 14 foot garage. Uh, has three awnings too on this side too, as you guys saw, 12 foot, 11 foot, 13 foot. Would not want to be the guy to have to clean these. Now, as far as the unloaded vehicle weight goes, as you saw in the trailer I just reviewed, it was higher than this number. So obviously if you add any options to this trailer, it's going to change this number. So you have to keep that in mind. I see that there's a generator prep package, but I don't see that a generator comes standard. So if that's the case, you know, you could have more pin weight for that too. Another thing to keep in mind is fresh water tank. You want to ask the manufacturer or the dealer, where is this tank? position because typically with the garage it's going to be closer to the front of the rig so this could add more pin weight to your truck and i think that water weighs about eight pounds per gallon somewhere in that ballpark 
So you wanna just make sure you do your research before you pull the trigger on something this big. All right, should you tow a big toy hauler with a single rear wheel truck? Let's find out. <clears throat> now, as far as you know, what you just saw for the truck are right here. And I'm gonna put the number in for the hitch weight soon, but here's the GVWR and here's the UVW, which is the unloaded vehicle weight for the toy hauler. So you saw that the advertised hitch weight was 2,900 pounds. They use 18.5% of the unloaded vehicle weight. I'm gonna round that off to 19% and we're gonna go with this number because this is the actual trailer. So that number is gonna look something like this, 3,212 pounds. Now I did a family of four, I believe I did a 200 pound guy, 135 pound wife, 120 pound kid, and then an 80 pound kid. I believe that's what this is here, I think. And with your uh, cargo, figure your hitch weight, any type of extra stuff, maybe if you have a bigger fuel tank, all that stuff is included here. So you have a total payload of 1,155 pounds that you have to account for. So with this hitch weight, now this is the unloaded vehicle weight of this trailer. You're at 624 pounds, so you are basically over. And I haven't even added any weight for you to go camping. So we figure 18,058 pounds is going to be the weight now because this is probably how much you're going to add to this rig. And if you multiply that by 20%, you're going to have a pin weight something like this. So as you guys can see, if you're looking to get a big toy hauler, you're going to have to look at dualies. I think, unfortunately, there's not many uh, single rear wheel trucks that have 45 to 4,800 pounds of payload capacity. So just keep in mind, it, there's a lot of variables too. A lot of people say that if you get a toy hauler, you put a big toy in the back, it'll take weight off of the pin weight. That might be the case, but you wanna to try to make sure you have more than enough truck if you're looking for something this big. This is a tall and this is a long trailer. I mean, this is, almost in cabin chassis territory. I've seen some toy haulers that have like 3,800 pound advertised pin weight, so just keep that in mind. But hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you soon.